Hello and welcome to Meadow Sage. Um, my name is Sonia, by the way. I wanted to draw a card. Well, first I had to find a deck that like, um, would have words on it because I wanted to do um, my word for the year and so I wanted to use a tarot or oracle or something to do that with. And before I get into that, I just want to talk about the um, 12 Days of Yule hashtag challenge that we all did, started by Ivy the Occultist. I had a whole lot of fun. I really enjoyed doing that. It wore me out, but I still enjoyed it. I enjoyed finding all these new channels, people I never knew were there. Um, and I'm very grateful for the ones that um, subscribe to me and I hope that we all continue to grow from this so and I hope everyone uh, I hope you have a happy new year <laughs> so I went through my decks I don't have a lot so it wasn't like this huge chore but I decided to go with the deck that I had been currently using, the one that I did my um, divination for in the 12 Days of Yule. And so I chose the, the Wildwood Tarot. These are the backs of them. And some of the cards. And you can see they have, you know, words on the bottom. So that's one of the reasons why I chose that. This is the box. So I love that picture. I got this off of Amazon. And the book that comes with it. Pretty thick book. Nice book. And so one of my goals for this new year was to do more tarot. Understand it more. And I doing it just for myself is not going to get me very far. Because, you know, you just drawing a card a day or doing a three card spread a week or something like that. I wanted more interaction with my decks. So, we're going to start off this year with picking the word of the year, which was da 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 home. That hit me. <laughs> because, um, since moving here, it'll be going on four years this year. In just a few months it'll be four years we've had a very hard time with this home we bought we did not buy what we thought we were buying just put it that way a lot of things have come to light in the past three years things that we now understand that we have to deal with and fix and do because it had all been covered up but it was giving me this attitude this thought process about this home and it wasn't a very good one so this one that's why this card kind of hit me and not only that well you'll see from what I come up with now all of this is not off the top of my head because I'm trying to get acquainted with tarot in itself and all that and I I can sometimes look at a card but I have to admit that I have to look at the book or I look at the book. And since I started in the beginning looking at the book, I always look at the book. It's hard to break that habit for me. So I'm like, okay, well, since I can't do it that way or I won't let myself, I'm just going to start getting acquainted with every meaning behind everything and just, I don't know, try to make something of that. So, home. So let's look at the card. Hopefully it won't be a glare. And don't mind my nails. I have not redone them yet. <laughs> so the Ten of Stones, home. Um, so you got these, these ten rocks or stones here that are like a gate. And um, you see a round house there that it leads. You go through and it leads up to that. And in the middle of that house is a tree, an apple tree, apparently, growing out of it. 
And if you notice on the stone arches, you have a man and you have a woman over here. Okay. Um, so we're coming back to Imok on the, the will of the year. And that's like starting over again, starting home, basically. Each stone here in this arch is important to the structure. And especially these two larger ones. Because without them, that foundation, you it can't stand at all without those. And the apple tree growing out of the round house up through the center, that's like the backbone or the strength of the house. So home, that's our familiarity, right? That's where we come back to after all our journeys, whether they were good or bad ones. Um, but it's never over. You know, now we will sit and talk about those journeys, good or bad, and share our stories, which we've done, we've been doing. This home would be what style people would live in um, from what I've gathered from the Iron Age. It's just a simple little house. It was homes then, that was the refuge. You know, it was a place to lay your head to rest. But the home also means family and the bonds between the group of people, whether that be family or friends or both. You know, you didn't have one or two. You had the whole groups living together and they had this bond. So home is where your heart is. Now, when you feel at home, you're comfortable and secure, but your home is not also the building you live in, but it's it's also within yourself and your fire and your shelter. And you invite others in to share in that. Now, this is what I was talking about, where it's not just your home, it's also yourself. So that also like hit me hard. In this environment, whether you're home or yourself, that nurtures you. It nurtures your spirit and your energy it recharges you and it makes you feel safe. So you want to build the strength of your home and energize it. And that will bring the energy into every part of your life. So are you feeling secure and happy or are you always stressed and depressed? This year, I want to find the changes that I need to make to feel secure and happy and calm. I need to seek that balance, not only in my home, but in myself. So I thought this was a very fitting card for me for this year, this word. And yeah. And also, while I was thinking about it, I wanted to talk about a little tip. We get these pillar candles, you know, these big, the big, thick candles, and they usually burn down like this, right? And in here, we'll get all pulled up with wax, and sometimes you can't relight it, like about halfway. So you end up, you know, ditching the candle. Well, I found a way to deal with that. I, well, I have candle wicks. You can get them on Amazon, tall ones, small ones, whatever size you need. So I had some candle wicks because I've, I've made candles and I just got a jar. And so after I use my candle and burn it and all this is like melted wax all in there, instead of letting that dry up around the wick and making it hard to get to the wick again the next time, I would pour the wax out into a jar with the wick in it. You can see that's black wax. And that way, when I go to light my candle again, it would light and I wouldn't have to dig wick, uh, wax from around the wick. And so now I still have my black candle, 
and I can go ahead and take this and melt it down and use to make other candles. But in the meantime, I still have my black candle I can light until I can get another one, okay? I don't, I'm not wasting a half burnt candle because I can't get the, get to the wick without having to dig around it. So that was just a little tip I wanted to share before I forgot about it because I had been meaning to. So that's my card of the year from the Wildwood Tarot Home. Blessings of the Dark and Wild.